Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you are new here, my name is Vanessa and I am an indie author from Toronto, Canada, and I publish under the pen name A.N. Sage. I work in fantasy, some sci-fi, mostly in the YA space, um, and I put out videos every week kind of talking about writing, um, how I feel about writing, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way, um, just some behind the scenes, and a lot, a lot of uh, planner plotting and just different structural kind of videos for writers out there. So if that sounds like something that you would like to be a part of that community, then go ahead and subscribe and we'd love to have you here. But as I mentioned, we are talking about planning because we tend to do that a lot. As you can see here, if this wasn't enough of a giveaway, um, we are having another planner video today and I am actually talking to you about my favorite pens. So these are the pens um, and pen-like things that I use all the time in my writing, in my planning, and pretty much in my daily life. I am a huge planner. I absolutely love to plan everything out. It really helps me stay on track. It helps me stay focused. Um, and plotting does the same thing for my books. So I am hoping that this will be useful for you if you're a stationary junkie. And with that said, I don't know if you can hear, I'm going to try to edit as much of the sound as possible, but there is construction happening in the condo above us. So if you can hear some drilling or anything like that, hopefully it's not too bad. I do have my shotgun mic on, so we should be okay noise level wise, but hopefully um, it won't be too, too bad throughout. I think they're wrapping up for the day. Let's hope, fingers crossed. So with that said, there's a lot of um, pens and stuff here. So um, I'm probably going to start with some of these here um, and then we'll move into the more pens or like writing utensils as we go. So I'm just gonna clear everything out of the way um, and I'm gonna go um, and get, I actually have here, right? so I have a little piece of paper here. Um, so as I'm showing this to you guys, I will be doing some pen tests. Um, I don't have the best writing. I am not a calligrapher. Just putting that out there, I have very messy writing. I have the handwriting of a child a lot of times. Um, apologies in advance, but that's what you got. At least you got to see the pants. <laughs> so the first ones that I have here, um, these are the Sailor um, Shikiori, and these are double-sided pens. If you're not familiar with um, double-sided markers, if you're not familiar with double-sided markers, um, usually they have one type of tip on the one side and then a thinner tip on the other side. Um, these are a kind of like the Tombow markers, which I do have to show you as well. Um, but I found these at a local Japanese stationery shop. Um, and you can actually get these um, online as well. So I will link everything below, including these. So the reason that I love these so much, why I use them. Um, I use color coding a lot um, in my planning and in my plotting. In my plotting, when I have multiple POVs uh, for or when I'm editing, I do use different color codes for that. It just helps me kind of get like a glance overview um, of where everything is, what the POVs are. And when I'm editing, I use it to pinpoint if it's structural, um, if it's like a development thing, if it's a character arc, um, if it's um, any kind of grammar. So everything is color coded so I know what I'm editing as well. Now, um, these ones here, so let me just bring this up so you can kind of see the first tip. It is a brush-like pen. And the tip on the other side is this very, very thin, um, same color pen. So if you look at the brush, you get almost like a highlighter from it. Um, if you do calligraphy, I like I said, I don't. This is the only time you will see that. This is the last time in this whole video you'll see me try to handwrite properly. But we have the two options here. So these are the sailors. So you've got the brush side, and probably you can do this a lot better if you care about calligraphy, and then the very thin side here. Um, now, some of them are lighter, some of them are darker. This was one full set. Um, so as you can see, we'll just skip over the fake 
calligraphy on the next ones. Um, these are the few colors. These are my go-to colors on these particular pens. Um, I am quite a fan of them. You can see that green, for example, is very, very dark. <clears throat> so it's not great for highlighting, but it is good for um, when you're editing and making notes and stuff like that. And if you don't like it, there's also a lighter green. So these are the sailor pens. I really, really like these. These are new to me. Um, the quality is amazing. They're very smooth. And this is just regular white printer paper. Um, it's like um, a higher, thicker grade paper, but still um, you can see how smoothly those go on there. So in a similar genre, um, we've got a different type of highlighter. This, if you're in the pen world, if you're a pen junkie, you're familiar with these. These are mild liners. I absolutely love these. Pretty much for the same reason I use these, um, just for different papers, right? So I like my mild liners more for my, um, sorry, for my Wonderland planner where you have that Tomo River paper, it's a bit thinner. I like these for that. I use these for thicker paper, like in all my plotting and my Erin Condren notebooks and my happy planners where they have a bit thicker paper. I use those in there. Um, just because I find these are lighter, I'll show you why. So I've got a few of my kind of go-to favorite colors here. So we've got the one side on these, if you're not familiar with the wild lighter, is a flat highlighter. So it's not a brush pen like we saw in the Sailor. Um, and the other side, it looks thicker, but it writes fairly thin as well. So this is the gray. So you've got the highlighter here and then a thicker, but still a thin version, if that makes sense. So thicker than the sailor, but thinner than the actual highlighter. And then we've got this color here. This is more of like a, not really a pink, it's almost like a, almost a red, but kind of a pink. And we've got, this is like one of my favorites recently. It's like a muted bronze color. And last but last least, we've got more of a blue. So I just kind of put up my favorite ones here. I do have a lot more of these. But these are the ones I kind of reached to because this is a favorite pens and writing utensils video. Um, so as you can see, you can get a much thicker line with the uh, fine tip of the mild liner. Um, and I do really like the way that the highlighter, because it's not a brush pen like the Sailor, you get a more consistent line as you draw that line over. So if you're someone who's bothered by inconsistency, um, I would definitely recommend a mild liner over a brush pen. Now, to finish off our brush pens here, let's go straight for the Tombows. I only brought out four colors. Um, for now, I do have, I, th I think almost the entire Tombow collection at this point. Um, I've always wanted to get into um, watercolor and drawing and stuff and just never happened because I didn't have the time. But, um, you know, maybe one day. So <laughs> for now, though, I do use these for color coding, for highlighting, for planning. Um, and for planning, I really like these um, because I use them to kind of time block, like initially in my planner. Um, and then I'll show you another pen that I use for that as well. But to kind of show off what a tombow is, so you can see it's very long compared to the other ones. Um, you'll have that very familiar brush pen on the one side and then you've got kind of in between the sailor and the uh, mild liner the fine tip is in between those and i really like because that way if you have all three of these you kind of have um, different variations of thickness for your fine tip as well um, so the tombow this is my favorite tombow color it's 772 and it is more of a like a rose, dusty rose color. And we got a gray, this is a darker gray. I have a lighter gray of theirs as well. And I interchange between the food depending what I need it for. 
got more of like a nude color. And then more kind of, a, I guess almost a bronze. I don't know if it's a bronze. It's got more of an army green to it. Um, but it is bronze-like. So you can see how we go from this very thin here on the fine tip on the sailor, a very thick mild liner, and a kind of in between in the Tombow. Um, and the Tombow colors, at least these, there's different ones you can get, of course, but these are very muted, and I really like that. They're almost like pastel -y washed out, um, and they just look really nice in the planner. Um, so the final non-pen pen that I have are these zig color dots. Um, if you're a planner, again, you are familiar with these. They've been blowing up all over the place. Um, but the zig color dots, the fun tip, they do have two tips as well. Some don't. Um, this particular line of theirs does. So the one side of these is a fine tip marker. But the cool part is the other side, which is, so I don't know how I can kind of show you, it's like like a little dot like it's a little foamy little dot type thing and the way they work is again i have more colors of these but let's just start out with the ones that i brought out so we'll have the fine here color dot right and then when you turn it around and you take this guy you can actually make a perfect little dot with it so you can make the dot as small as you want or as thick as you want. So that is really cool. I really like these um, for that purpose. Um, they're good for making kind of to-do lists for yourself. Um, they're good for marking off time blocking, which is how I use them. And I'll show you in a second when I'm done swatching these exactly how I time block using the zig color dots in combination with like a Tombow or any of the other ones. Color dot. So that's really nice. I'll just swatch the same thing twice. Oh my God. I still have pregnancy brain. Sorry. Here we go. That's a color we haven't seen yet. It's nice little kind of salmony pink. So the way that I would use these for color blocking. So if you're not familiar, I will link my uh, one of my planner videos somewhere above um, in the cards or in the description below. So you can see how I use the Wonderland planner and how it's set up in general, because I do have a setup of the Wonderland planner. And the Wonderland planner is a time planner. So your weeks, um, it's vertical and you would have time. So you would have your like nine till 10 or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly from which hours it works from until, um, but it's timed on the side. And the way that I would use it is I would grab whatever color. So let's say I'm working on cover design, for example, and I'll be working on it from say uh, like 10 a.m. until like 2 p.m., right? Um, I would write down Cauldron Press, which is the name of my cover design business. And I'll write it in the color that I've assigned to Cauldron Press. And I would draw an arrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. when I know that I need to be working on design. Now, at the end of the day, I use my Timeular, which is a time tracking device that I have. Um, and I would use that tracking device in order to figure out exactly how many hours I've worked. So if I thought I was going to work for four hours, but I actually ended up working for five hours, for example, I will use this dot and I will mark off five dots. So I will mark off that I actually worked five hours in the time that I blocked myself, so I went over. Um, and that's kind of how I have an overview in my planner um, because I do like the physical look of the planner and I like working physically in the planner, so I like seeing it that way. But that's kind of how I will use um, these guys for weekly and daily time tracking. So these are out of the way. Switch them around. 
And now we're gonna bring in all the other goodies here. So since we're talking about color coding, we might as well stay consistently throughout. Um, I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna start swatching the other side. So there's a couple of other pens I really like for color coding. So these are not markers like we just had. These are actual pens. Um, I have two, I have the whole collection. I just brought out two um, of the Sarasa, Zebra Sarasa. They are, these are the 05, these are the clip. So they've got like a little clip on the side that you can clip onto your planner, onto a page, onto a book, whatever. Um, this is one part of their vintage collection. They're very nice colors. Um, these are great for color coding. So, so we'll go with Sarasa Vintage. And just so you can see another one. So very muted colors, very vintage muted colors. I absolutely adore these. Great for color coding. Another set, um, again, I have a few more colors of these, just kind of grab whatever I could fit in my hands today for the purpose of this video. Um, but these Uniball 1 pens, these are also 0 0.5 and they are really good for color coding. Um, now these strasses were very muted colors. These are very bright. Um, so let me just swatch a couple. So this is Uniball 1. So you can see, so even this one, for example, which is kind of like a purple close to this, but it's muted, but it's still brighter than the Sarasa version of it. So you can see how much brighter those are. Those are really good for color coding. Usually the way I work is blue is for my and sage writing stuff. Pink is for YouTube. Purple is for Cauldron Press, my design shop. Um, and then I would use the this red one for personal things. And this um, kind of beigey brown one, this is all for bowls. Um, and then as you can probably guess, they correspond to all the other little markers that I've just shown you. Um, when it comes to any attempt at brush lettering um, or just getting bolder kind of um, words on a page, because sometimes you want some things to stand out, like occasions or any events or anything like that. I love this um, Tombow Fudunos, Fudun, I'm, I'm gonna butcher it, Fudunos, okay? The brush pen. <laughs> I will link everything. <laughs> Don't buy me butchering, I apologize. For anybody who can pronounce that properly, you are the best and I suck. So these are the Tombow ones, they come in a set. One is gold, one is silver. They're both black, just the gold and silver is the little foiling on the side. And these are, let's open both of these up. Um, so these are kind of like a harder brush point. So they are also brush points, but they're a bit of a harder tip. So they're not like the Tombow. So if you look at like a comparison of what these look like together, so Despite being both brush pens, the Tombow you can see is just a bit more um, softer looking. Um, and then there's two versions. So the silver versions of these um, is like a hard, a hard brush. So you have to press harder to get any kind of like if you were to write. I don't know what I'm trying to write there. Um, but it looks almost like a uh, like a permanent marker, it feels like, almost to me. Now this one that's more gold and the actual cover of it is black, this one's more blue. It is a much softer brush. So when you press on it, you can feel that softness. And that way when you write, you can get more of that calligraphy feel to it if you're into that. Now for my other kind of everyday pen. So my favorite pen of all time is the Sarasa Dry. So the Sarasa Dry, this is just a pink 
um, body of it is black inside. This is 04. Um, there's also a 03, I believe, and a 05. 05 is really nice too. Um, I just happen to have the 04s right now. Um, but these are fantastic if you're using Tomo River paper or any paper that doesn't soak up ink quite as fast. Instead of having the sink, the ink sit on top, uh, these dry super fast. So as you can see, there's no, absolutely no um, kind of bleed from it. And I, I waited maybe half a quarter of a second. Um, so these are my go-to pens. And I also love them because you can actually get the pen itself as a refill. Um, and the same store where I found these sailor pens, that Japanese store that we have here um, in Toronto near us, um, they actually carry huge packs. So you can buy packs of 10 of just the refills of the Sarasa drives, which is amazing. And so what I do is I grab some of my favorite pens. This is like a recent one. Um, I don't, I honestly don't even know where I got it, but it's really heavy. Um, it's black matte with some shiny black on the side. I think it came in some sort of subscription box. It's super heavy, um, but it fits. Like if you unscrew this, I won't right now because it's going to be harder. Um, but inside what I did was I put in that Sarasa dry. So it's the same ink as you have here as a refill inside your favorite pen. So you just have to make sure that whatever pen you're using, if it's a favorite pen of yours, if you like the body of it, just make sure that it can work with your favorite um, refill. And then you can save yourself some money. Instead of buying these new pens all the time, you can have something that looks nice and kind of fits your aesthetic more, um, but has the writing capability that you really like and the ink you like. Um, so yeah, those are all the pens. So again, take this out of the way, bring them all back. Um, these are my go-tos. Um, I do have a pretty vast uh, pen collection. I also have a lot um, of pens um, that I've kind of inherited, gotten as gifts. I have a um, growing collection of fountain pens as well. So I will do a video on my fountain pen collection later down the line. Um, but for right now, these are kind of my everyday go-to pen types um, that I recommend to anybody who's looking to get new pens, who's looking to get into planners, um, who uses a combination of different types of planners. Um, and you might not know what kind of pens work with everybody, but in case you were looking for some new pen suggestions, ta-da, we have these here. So if you've stuck around for this entire video, thank you, you are a champ, um, you're amazing. Thank you so much for being part of this community. I'm so excited um, every time that we get new members or every time you guys leave me comments, it makes me so happy to interact with you, to talk to you. Um, so keep doing that. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, and I will keep you posted weekly. Um, we are, um, I think maybe I've, I've recorded quite a few videos as almost like a batch in preparation for mat leave. So when you're watching this, it's possible I'm already on mat leave um, with my little baby. Um, but if I'm not still, um, then wish me luck because <laughs> I'm very nervous. It's our first child. <laughs> but other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will see you all next week. Happy planning and stay magical, everyone. Bye.